Yo guys, what's up? This is Jay Bar with Bar Creative. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to side chain your drums in Logic Pro 10. I know they have the new function where you just have to link it up in your side chaining, but if you got hi-hats and snares in there, how do you set it up? Well, this video will help you. I tried to make it happen in 10 minutes or less. Um, by the way, I have a video on compression, so if you don't know what the compression knobs do, I have a separate video for that. I'll leave it in the description, but you're checking out Bar Creative, and this is how to side chain in Logic 10. I hope you enjoy. Later. <laughs> This is what it sounds like before anything is happening. Um, so there's our chords. Kind of flat. All right, it's just simple chords. And then we have the, the drum track, which I did an ultra beat. I just programmed the quick, uh, just something. All right, so it's simple, okay? But it sounds kind of flat, like it's just like, you know, there's nothing really kind of going on and so that's when you would use sign chain compression to kind of add this rhythmic element to the pads okay so the pads being these up here all right they're kind of flat so um, so how do you do it well the one thing you could do is you could go to pads and I already have a compressor in here so I'm gonna just show you how to load it so you click on audio effects and you um, go to down here to dynamics compressor and it brings up a new compressor. I have it kind of at 50% just so that it fits nicely on my screen. And normally what you would do now in the, the newest Logic 10.3, you can actually pick a track to sidechain, but that doesn't really work. I'll show you why. If you have all your drums on one track, right? So instrument track two is my drum track. And so what this is telling the compressor to do is, hey, take my MIDI signals from track two and use them as your compression signals. Instead, like normally the way compression works is it compresses the actual channel. So right now, if I have none, you can see it's it's working on the actual pads. Okay, and it's compressing the actual pads, but I don't want that. I don't want, I want it to match up with my drums. So to do that, I make a drum track like I did, and in my sidechain compression, I set it up on the pads because that's the one I want to be affected. I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna say, hey, use the information on that instrument track for the drums to do your compression so that I get this cool dipping effect. Let's see if it works. Um, so I'll unmute these, go back. And you can see it's kind of working. Like we have something happening. We have some variation going. So it's compressing my pads as if they were the drums. It's saying, hey, take the signal from my drum track and use that to do compression. Um, and so that's what we have set up. You can see, we'll stop this, on my pad track, I have the compressor. In the compressor, I'm telling it, use my drum track as your source, your MIDI source to compress. And I'm getting it, but it's kind of loose. Like, it's not real tight on the bass drum, which kind of defeats the purpose of it. Even if I adjust this, it's, it's, it's kind of just too loose. It's just kind of all over the place. So here's how you fix that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag this off to the corner here. Actually, that's probably where my head is right now. Put it in the other corner so you can see it. Um, and I'm gonna duplicate this track. So I click on the drum track, click the duplicate button, and I get another instance of it. Um, take the solo off. And all I wanna do is click and drag to highlight these, hold down the option key, click and drag, and I get a duplicate set of drums. Now, I literally have two drum tracks that are identical. The reason I want that is because I'm going to go into this one. So I'm going to highlight that and I'm going to do Command 4 because I like working in the big piano roll. And I'm going to get rid of all the hi-hats, all the snares, all the open hi-hats. Um, and by the way, if you have kick drums that are on different notes and you can't just highlight everything like this, because that's nice and easy, but like let's say you had a kick up here, you could just click on the key and it'll highlight the whole row. So I'm going to do that just to demonstrate. Um, you know, or you can highlight them too. You can do that. Um, but yeah, if you want to highlight the whole row, you just click on the key and it highlights all of them after that, every instance. So that's sweet. Now, these are all identical. Like, I didn't do anything fancy with the drums. I made them all the same. So um, I did change the hi-hats a little bit, but we're getting rid of the hi-hats, so it doesn't matter. So I'm actually going to get rid of these because I already did the work on this one and the 
the bass drum doesn't change, so I'm just going to duplicate the one I fixed. If you did have a setup where the bass drum changes, you would have to do it to match. Okay, so the idea is you want the bass drum in this to match the bass drum that your side chain is going to be running out of. So what we have going on is we have our pads, they're kind of flat, we want to add a side chain. We tried to do it with our normal drum track, but because I have my hi-hats and snares in that track, it made it crazy. So I had to isolate the bass drum. That's why I have this other track here. And what I did was I took the hi-hats and the snares out. And so that's where we're at at this point. That's all we've done. Now what I'm doing is I'm trying to duplicate this out so that it runs the full, whoops, the full length of my, my loop here. So I, I'm all set up. All right, so we're gonna play this. But you can hear the bass drum's coming in a little louder than it was, look. See there's... So what we can do is, because we're just running a side chain on, on this, we can actually just mute that. Because um, all we need is the MIDI pulse. The MIDI pulse is gonna tell the compressor, hey, work right now. Once that MIDI pulse goes, that's gonna send the signal to the compressor and you're gonna see the levels dip. So we really just needed these MIDI regions, okay? It doesn't have to have volume. Um, you're gonna see we still, even though it's muted, we still have, whoops. Actually, I'm making a liar to myself. It will work muted, but here's another way to do it. If you don't want it to, if you don't want to worry about muting and all that stuff, what you can do is go to the stereo out, right click on it and do no output. And you'll see we're not getting audio. Okay, so we're not getting an audio signal, but we are getting a MIDI signal. Let me show you what I mean. We're still getting levels on that channel. All right, so quick recap. We had pads, they sounded flat. We wanted to side chain them to match our drum beat. But when we did, we had hi-hats and snares in there, and so the side chain had too much wobble in it. We isolated the bass drum by creating a new track, putting the bass drum only on that track, and now we want to link that back to our pads because we want the pads to dip every time the bass hits. So we have our compressor set up already. So just to show you where that was, we had the compressor on the pads from earlier. And I'm going to click on it. I'm going to go in and now I'm going to click this drum track. They're identical. So just if you want it just for your own purposes at home, if you change the name, you'll see the name change show up in here. I can unmute these. It'll work either way, but there it is. So I know I'm choosing the right channel now. And so what that's telling the compressor to do is, hey, take the MIDI signals from channel three, from instrument three, and use that to compress. Watch how it works. And it's coming in kind of loud. So that's what the makeup knob's for. You can adjust your volume. But you can see we're getting a huge needle dip. It's, you know, it's like really pronounced, which is awesome. Um, and again, to achieve that, you can, you know, take your attack and re release down pretty low, put your ratio up around eight and your threshold around negative 35. Obviously you can mess with that, but that's gonna give you a really strong side chain effect. You can see it, you can graph it. You see it there too, it's working. We can see the dip on the volume. If I soloed that, you can hear the bass drum hitting. You see that? So pretty cool. And so like I said, this will work muted because what I did was I said, hey, um, on the pad channel, I want you to compress, but don't use yourself to compress, use these other drums. And what we did was we isolated to the bass drum and it works, guys. Now, the reason I did that was because I had hi-hats and snares on the track. If you just have a bass drum track, so let's like... Let's just wipe all this out real quick because it's already set up. I'm going to put a new um, region in. So, and I'm just going to make this um, four, you know, four on the floor. Like, there's my bass drum. There it is. Hold down Command and whoops. That'd be cool. Um, I kind of like that. <laughs> but we'll just do this real quick. I want to keep this video under 10 minutes for you guys. Make it easy. Whoops. I meant to hold down. What am I doing? Um, there we go. Hold down option and just drag them out like that. We got four on the floor now and option is your duplicate button. Option, click and drag and you can duplicate quickly like this. And we're gonna just, everything's set up already guys. Whoops, I wanted to option drag that. 
Everything's already set up, sidechain's in place. Let's check out how this, this sounds different. So that's giving you your pulsing effect. And if you just soloed out your pads, you can hear it. <laughs> so, there you go, guys. Side chaining on Logic Pro 10. I'm Jay Barr. This is Bar Creative. Thanks for checking me out. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe. I'm trying to build this channel up. Show a brother some love. Later.